All right. So the title of this is, you know, why I'm back in real estate and why is it different? But it's also crazy because it's kind of the same too. And we'll get to that. So let's just talk real quick. If you guys, obviously guys listening in know Kat is like one of the very few people I call my best friend because she is a ride or die friend. And <laughs> it's funny how everything comes full circle. So let's start back in like 2010. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> take a, let's take a trip down memory lane. So yeah. We, this is how Kat and I got connected. I was a brand new real estate agent and I, you know, in a small town, Oklahoma, I, my friend Jody, who shout out to that girl, cause she changed the trajectory of my life by mentioning this. We were at a bonfire and she was like, Hey, you would be a perfect fit to go work for Jay Kinder. And Jay at the time had, you know, uh, he was under Coldwell Banker, but it was Jay Kinder real estate team. And he's a huge name in Lawton. And I'm like, uh, okay. You're crazy because you guys kn know me or at least knew who I was at the time. Super scared. Didn't take action. I was shy in a sense until you got to know me anyways. So I get, I faced my fears. I called in, got an interview, you know, fast forward, got licensed, whatever came on board and being a new girl, it's almost like being the new kid in school. You know, you just don't know where you fit in. You don't know who you're going to talk to or whatever. Yeah. And we, I got stationed up, I got stationed up in the bullpen, um, oh, with the, the bullpen, the beautiful bullpen. Um, and there was a girl named Kat that was right next to me and she had just joined. She wasn't new to real estate though. You had years of experience, but you were new to the team. Yeah. So we were both there, new agents on J Kinder real estate home selling team or whatever it was back then when we were Colt Banker. Um, but yeah, so that's how Kat and I got connected because we were the new girls and we both were crazy and we both, <laughs> I don't know, we had so many similarities. It was like perfect. It was meant to be, you know, when there's people come to your life and you're like, there's a reason why you come into my life. Kat is definitely one of them. Yeah. So yeah, we would do, um, call nights. We would have our pizza. We would take a shot of vodka. We would make calls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being real and raw, raw with you guys because, you know, to kind of, you know, soften or whatever it was, it was fun times, but I will say this, what it was different back then is obviously mindset because before I joined Jay's team, I didn't know what professional development was. I didn't know what entrepreneurship was. I didn't know anything other than my mind was like, Hey, where can I, how can I make money being a parent? And then, you know, not having to deal with school and all this other stuff in real estate was the path. Like, I feel like in Latin, there's two women. It's like medical or real estate. And I can't stay on the side of blood. So I knew that that was ruled out. <laughs> so that was my mindset really is just like, yeah. It was just like, I don't know, it sounds so crazy, but it was just like money. It wasn't because, oh, I love looking at houses. It was just like, how am I going to, uh, you know, support, you know, be a mom and everything else. So mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. how Kat and I got on. And that's how my mindset was. And Kat, I know you can attest to this. I know you already were acclimated with personal development, but when it came to um, like being able to go to conferences where Darren Hardy speaking, being yeah. in that environment, like Jay and John had created such an amazing yes. culture. Oh, yeah. Definitely like a learning. So like that mentality shift of when I first started real estate was completely different than my mentality that I have now. Yeah, but definitely. I mean, we had some, uh, we had some adventures to say the least. <laughs> and it was crazy because, you know, as I got into real estate, I definitely enjoyed, you know, the flexibility. I enjoyed the hours. I enjoyed the limitless of it. I mean, Kat, what, what attracted you back then? Like, where was your mindset? Just so people can kind of get a story of a basic yeah. foundation of the story. Um, you keep in mind, I had gone through 2008 and I pretty much lost everything. So I literally remember I Googled Jay, <laughs> I Googled him and that's how I found him because he was doing so well. Um, and yeah, just like you said, it changed my life because it is all about the personal development and the mindset. And if it wasn't for him and John Kitchen, I literally would not, there's no way I would have stuck it out in real estate at all. I have no doubt because yeah, 
it was it was some crazy times back then and <laughs> it was insane I am I am glad I'm definitely grown since then because <laughs> there's no it was just crazy crazy times yeah. but yeah. the beauty of it is like okay so like you know getting in real estate it's fun it's exciting it's fast paced mm -hmm. it's you know mm -hmm. stressful but then it's also rewarding it's feast it's famine a lot of famine a lot of feast <laughs> but <laughs> every I can serve the chicken yeah I serve them. <laughs> you forget your microwavable uh dinner that cost a dollar in the microwave yes you don't eat but whatever we made it we made it we made it yeah and and thank god for for the training because it was it was it really was and I could and you know I was speaking with people who were new agents or you know at these conferences and them telling me about their team structure telling me about their environment and I'm like wait your broker doesn't provide that your your broker doesn't help you with training your broker doesn't help you with leads your broker doesn't do what do what so like I, I never knew what it was like being on a real estate team without Jay Kinder or John Kitchens or all that that leadership so, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it was great because that definitely instilled those habits of us just having to get out work for it. Nothing was gave to us. Nothing was provided. That's right. Um, <laughs> so. But the beauty of it is like it instilled like those habits and it opened up our minds to the possibilities and really becoming who we intended to be, not just in real estate, but as a person contributing mm -hmm. to society. So we went through the fun real estate back i think we moved here in 2014 frisco in the dallas area so 2014 got here i got my texas license and it was just completely different because i was used to a buyer's market and all the strategies all my negotiation skills are used to a buyer's market then i get here and it's the complete opposite like if you weren't bringing contracts with fifty thousand dollars over asking price and everything else then you weren't getting accepted offer. And I was just getting so frustrated. And I was, you know, just all the emotional, all everything that was going with it. It kind of burnt me out with real estate because I was like, why, why, why am I, you know, kind of, I, I feel like I lost my why, my passion when it came to it. Mm -hmm. So being licensed in, in Texas and then, you know, kind of realizing that maybe this isn't my jam anymore. Maybe I need to focus on other stuff. So then I got with Jan, I got connected with home staging and did operations with HSRA, helping, and then now helping with NAEA events and things like that. However, so this is how it comes full circle, you guys. So during this time, and I'm telling you, like, Kat, she's ride or die. She's seen me at my absolute lowest of low, and she's seen me at my highest of high. Like, get you a friend that sees, yeah. <laughs> get you a friend that sees your true crazy, and if they still stick around, they're your true friend and Kat is a true friend and I'm so grateful for our friendship. Yeah. So it comes full circle because we get connected back with, you know, after, you know, when I was licensed in Texas, that was whenever uh, we had the Kinder Reese team here and it was not EXP affiliated. So EXP wasn't on Jay's radar and no one was affiliated with EXP at that time when I let my license just expire because I felt like it was just what I was looking for. So let's go back to the full circle. So Kat, <laughs> girl, I don't even know how we even got connected back, but we got, we got, you know, just like the timing comes when people come into your life and you're just like, yeah. this yeah. is me. You came back. Like, when was it? Like last year, we got really super connected again, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, from that Thunder game. I called, or I, that's when I text from the Thunder game here. Um, yeah. It, so, that's exactly so we get connected back cat you know john was exp because he's licensed in oklahoma um i was not but cat was you know she was like you know asking about exp whatever gets connected with john comes back on board with exp because of the opportunity now gets mm -hmm. you this is not 2010 cat mindset this is 2019 cat mindset which is still amazing person but just professionally grown and experienced a lot of you know by that time you're already your broker you have your broker's license right you're, yeah. and here's the big bomb you guys you guys ready for this cat was commercial cat wasn't residential cat was doing commercial that's right, that's right. Oh, oh my gosh wait what <laughs> that's cool like you're doing commercial Love it. so and i made the comment it's so funny i made the comment back then and i said if i was to ever get back into real estate I would go commercial. There's no way I could do residential. I mean, there's a way I would just choose not to because mm -hmm. it's not where my heart was. I would, I love the business mm -hmm. side of things.
games. I love looking at the numbers. I love strategy. I love all that stuff. And it, it's great when it comes to residential to a point, but it's not what I would, not the person who I am today, what I would align with. Right. So insert mm-hmm. my comment, if I was to ever come back into real estate, I would do it commercial. And here I am a year <laughs> later taking that into fruition because you guys literally the 27th, three days ago, I've got back my active license. Um, and I took my Ooh. test. So here's the deal. In the state <laughs> of Texas, like if you allow your license to go past two years, you have to re- you have to retake your test. You don't have to redo your, um, your like license or your education, but you'd have to retake your, pass your test. Now, mind you, it was like a, you know, I took a little AWOL of 2020, it was 2006, let's say at least four years sabbatical. So I'm like, okay, cool. Like I'll get my license again. I just need to take my test. Okay. For all those real estate agents watching this and listening to this, you know, that the test is, um, it's just not about like showing, right. It's not what you actually, it's just a lot different is you can't just go in to take the test and pass it. So and Texas uh, is twice the hours as Oklahoma. Yeah, I will say 180 that. hours. Right. So it's a lot. Yeah. Well, I, um, you know, there was, I was like, okay, my goal is to get my license before we go to 10 X con, which is next month on the 20th. Ooh, yeah. ooh. Um, but I wanted to be a licensed commercial real estate agent when I, when we went to 10 X, because to me, that was just what I envisioned myself being a, an audience with that kind of a mindset. Well, then, um, you know, there's some like changes or whatever coming up and I'm like, crap, I really need to get my license activated before the 30th of January. And this was two weeks ago. I have not picked up a book. I had not done anything. Luckily I'm doing the 75 hard. So I have an hour and a half listening, uh, an hour and a half of audio books, whatever. So I go on audible. I download like the national real estate. Like you guys want to fall asleep, listen to <laughs> the national prep exam on audible. Like it's painful talking about all the different types of title and I did this, you guys for a week straight. Like I, I, I might have become like slightly brain damaged. Like there was a time in, in my life. I was like, I just really feel stupid right now. Cause I feel like I've dumped everything out of my head. And I just started cramming for this real estate exam. And then of course, you know, I, that was just for the national. Then I had to, you know, do all these other books, but whatever. Took my test. I go in there. I'm like, okay, worst case I fell. That's cool. Retake the test again, but at least I can try to get it before January 30th. So I go in there and she's like, okay, whatever. You have like three hours total time. And I am a horrible test taker. And I know people say you, that's, you know, watch your words and I'm watching my words and I'm just not excited to take tests. <laughs> I go in there and this girl that checks me and she's super sweet, super nice asking me like, you know, like where I got my shirt and all this other stuff. I'm like, oh, that's, that's making me feel a lot less, you know, calming me down. I get in there, take my test and an hour passes and I'm done with both. And I'm like, oh, great. I just took a three hour test in an hour and half the stuff that was on the test was not in any of the books that I was reading or listening to. <laughs> of course. I didn't tell anyone that I was taking the test because I anticipated you guys that I was going to fail because I don't know, I just hate taking tests. So I get out and or I'm sitting there and the last time I took the test, it popped up and it said, you've passed. <clears throat> well, I'm just sitting there. I'm like, okay, like, come on, at least help me pass one test so I don't want to take both of them the next time. So I'm just sitting there like this. <laughs> the screen just goes blank. And I'm like, oh crap, I failed. Like they don't want you to like pop up and say failure and then you make, make a scene when other people are taking the test. Yeah. I'm like, oh, so I'm just still waiting. And then I, I feel a tap on my shoulder and it's that lady who's super nice to me. She just has like, this look on her face. And I'm like, oh my gosh, she looks like she's going to a funeral. Like she's so sad right now. I probably <laughs> just passed. I failed both my tests. So I get out there and um, she's like, your test results are on the counter. And I'm like, okay, this is it. Like I failed. That's cool. I just got to, at least I know what I need to study for. So I go over there and I get my, inf- my all my stuff, all my stuff out of the locker and everything. And I don't even flip the piece of paper over because I'm like, this girl gave it away. Like I, like she might as well as like announced it to the waiting room, the other people waiting to take their tests. Like this girl just failed y'all. And <laughs> I walk out and I'm like, oh, 
I go to the elevators. I finally flip over. I get enough courage to flip over my paper and it says national exam, like uh, results pass. And I'm like, oh, heck yes. Now I only have <laughs> three point tests too. So yeah, much I'm a little bit better. And then I flap over the next piece of paper and it says Texas state exam. Like I'm like cringing to even read the next word. And it says pass. Y'all, if I could have done cartwheel, I would have totally done it in that building because, or if I could have yelled in that like quiet testing center, I would have screamed because I had no idea. So now I'm like, I try calling Kat. Uh, she was out showing a client or whatever. So she didn't pick up. So I'm like, I don't want to tell her. I'm just like, Hey girl, call me when you get a second. Of course, you know, I'm like <laughs> so excited. I want to scream it like from the mountaintops, but yeah. So I passed my test. I'm licensed now. And here is how it's different. You guys, this real estate journey, like I am in a completely different mindset. I'm in a completely different state of mind. I'm in a completely different just place altogether as a person, as a business owner, as like, I don't know, I feel like all of my history of like, you know, being an entrepreneur has led up to this moment is because I'm not doing residential this time around. You guys, I am so excited to announce that I am having Kat as my guide and mentor and sponsor through this. And I will be selling and focusing my real estate career on commercial real estate versus residential real estate. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm super excited. So let's talk about this because mm -hmm. I know those are really long winded stories, but it's just, you guys got to understand like me and Kat's bond and relationship. And then all the stuff that happened in the past week, it's been crazy, but here we are. And it's funny is like when I was like, even kind of like got the idea in my head about commercial is just cause like I was sitting with Kat, we went and tore a listing that she was about to take on. And I just saw her like, just the way she was in her zone. Like I've never seen a cat, like I've never seen cat like that before. Like I've seen cat like on showings, like open houses. We did the open house on steroids. We did all that stuff. It was fun yeah. to get me wrong. I'm yeah. super grateful for that. <laughs> yeah. But it was just like, I don't know. You just, when you see somebody in their jam, like, I'm like, this is what Kat is made for. Like Kat is designed for commercial real estate. And then I'm just thinking, mm -hmm. I'm like, I could totally see myself like being that person that crunches the numbers, that looks out the best interests of their clients that help them. And it, here's, I think the big differentiator too. And I know Kat, you can definitely speak on this. Residential is great. I love it. I love the, my clients that I worked with. I was super grateful for the time and the lessons learned I had there. However, it's, it takes, a, it takes a special person. It's almost like nursing in the sense that you have to be like emotionally involved in it because it's a big emotional time for your clients. You have to be bought into that. So residential tends to be more emotional because you're, you know, whether you're working with sellers who's selling like their family home, or maybe they're going through a divorce and having to sell their home there versus, you know, maybe you're going for a buyer that's excited about their first family home with their newlywed husband or wife. Mm -hmm. So like, that's an exciting time. It's, it's, it's fulfilling, but it's very emotional and it's very, it, it's very, it's very emotional. You take a special kind yeah. of person and mm -hmm. commercial on the flip side, Kat, how would you feel like that's different than residential? Um, commercials completely opposite. And it's nice because we're advising business owners. We're advising people that are changing the economic, the market, the economy in your local market. And it's a huge deal. Like it's, it's, it's awesome because every entrepreneur has a different story. Every business owner has a different story. And so with, with your experience already in the marketability and everything that comes to the table, um, it's, it's just a beautiful, it's going to be a beautiful transition. I, I am so excited you yeah. this is exciting like you guys you have no idea like watch out for me and Kat because we're <laughs> higher <laughs> so yeah that's just the big shift of it and the beauty of it like you know partnering with Kat is like Kat is helping me and mentoring me and she's in Oklahoma like mm -hmm. and I'm here in Texas but that's the beauty of it is like being able to you know partner with people in a different state and here's the deal, like if I don't succeed, that's not in Kat's best interest. So she's going to be, I mean, obviously she's my friend and she's going to help me out, but like professionally too, like we have a professional relationship because Kat's my sponsor when it comes to EXP. So now my success helps Kat, which in return helps me. So it's just kind of like a cool thing and a cool experience. And 
I'm just super excited. I am so excited. Mm -hmm. I know it's going to be amazing. <laughs> oh, one more thing that came back around to me is I remember asking Kat when I was like thinking about it, I'm like, it kind of was in my back of my mind. I haven't even said anything to anybody, but I was like, do you have to get a certain license to sell commercial like real estate? <laughs> <laughs> like, Mind you guys, I'm laughing because I was already selling real estate. I was already in the real estate industry for like five or six years. <laughs> you would think I would freaking know this, but like, mm -hmm. As coming from residential, commercial is this beast, this unicorn, mm -hmm. whatever. Like you like, oh, that's cool, but I'm not cool enough for that. And here's those like, <laughs> I don't know. You don't have to have a special license. However, you do, mm -hmm. it's important for you to have special training. It's important for you to be aligned with people who are helping you there for your success. It's important to have an understanding so absolutely, there's more educational that needs to be invested mm -hmm. as a commercial real estate agent. However, you do not need a special license. You don't need to go back and get like, a, you know, it's great to go back and get certifications, with, which can, you can talk about this because yeah. now Lamar is kind of helping out too, right? Well, this like CCIM is our accreditation, obviously, when you start dealing more with uh, commercial. And I know for me, when I started on my first CTIM class was like literally almost $5,000 because I didn't know anything. Uh, there were discounts available or anything like that. So it was pretty expensive. Now NAR has actually come out with training. That's a part of that with CCIM. So it's literally so much lower. Um, and, and so if anyone's interested in that, you know, you can automatically go onto the NAR site with your NAR's ID number, look it up because all of that's brand new. They just rolled it out in the last, I think, three to four months was it was announced. So um, it changes the game because mm -hmm. it literally changes the game. It allows any agent that's interested to say, yeah. okay, well, let's get going. Let, let's do, let's get some classes. And I wanna say this right now, you guys listening in, if you're a real estate agent or if you're thinking about maybe a real estate career, you guys, we are literally, I'm so excited because we're really working hand in hand yeah. on commercial processes so that we can literally implement them immediately in the business, help, you know, it, with existing real estate knowledge, but then also help with like negotiations with terms and how you can help your clients, whether it be a, a buyer in commercial or seller in commercial, we're going through all that. I'm so excited to be able to be part of this process because Kat and I are going to take this opportunity and this partnership that we have, you know, just collaborated on. Nation. We're going to be able to help other real estate agents. And yeah. the great thing is, like I said, is like, yeah, we're in different states, but you could still be part of our team. Like absolutely nationwide. Nationwide. So you're and you're a licensed real estate agent or you think about getting your license, definitely feel free to hit us up. We're not going to be trying to spam you or, you know, whatever. <laughs> no. We're going to keep it real. We're going to tell you, like, we're here to help everyone. And I'm super excited to be able to be part of that, to help other commercial real estate agents, like formal, formal, form, I cannot talk, previous, <laughs> those R's get me every time. I know. Previous uh, <laughs> residential real estate agents that are interested in making that transition to commercial. Like, this is going to be like, I want to be the, like, being able to take my experience from this and help it pass on to with, with Kat's expertise and guidance of her commercial that she already has and all of her hard earned lessons learned. <laughs> Cause I mean, Kat, if you had the opportunity that I had, I mean, how much, like how much opportunity would you have had now? You know what I mean? Like, cause Kat was just, uh -huh. it was just Kat. Kat was rolling mm -hmm. it along by herself and learning how to do this all by herself. And I am grateful. <laughs> That she did that because now I'm able to learn to expedite collapse time through her life lessons learned. So I'm super excited. Yeah. And I think agents get really intimidated, especially women getting yeah. into commercial. Please don't. That's what we, we are. Come on, grab, come on, come along because it, it, this is going to be exciting, fun time. Um, I, I'm so thankful for it. I, I really enjoy it. And it's, it's given me for me, it's something that I enjoy and I have a piece about, and I really want to share that with others. And so I'm so excited to be partnering with her, Ms. Holly, because it's exciting to be able to allow and utilize the core value, one of the core values, which is collaboration with DXB. 
and be able to share this with other people that may have an interest in it and, and felt like, oh, there's no way I could do it. Yeah, you can. <laughs> so, yeah, Kat's yeah, definitely like, she is one of a handful of people that like, I can say that she is one of the biggest hustlers, like that girl. Yeah. Like we'll go out, <laughs> eat dinner, have fun. And it's like, they say 11 o'clock and I'm like, I'm pooped. I'm like an old lady. I'm like, all right, good night. I'm going to bed. And then <laughs> I wake up, let's just say eight o'clock and cat's out here working. And I'm like, Oh, how'd you sleep? Oh, good. Uh, you know, I woke up at 2 AM. I had this brilliant idea. I, I sent this to my clients. Da, 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 da. I'm like, oh, 2 AM, I was sleeping. So like cat is working when people are sleeping. And so there's a lot of great, I, I don't know, like it's good to be around friends and, you know, whether they're professional, like in the same industry of you or not, like it's good around be around those kinds of people that push you because I'm thinking like, shit, like while I was sleeping, Kat was making money because Kat was working. Another classic example is when she came over another time too, when we had fun, we went out or whatever. I'm waking up, kind of getting sleep out of my eyes and I come out here to get coffee and I hear the front door shut. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's already on her way out. Like that girl is showered, makeup, clean, heels, good to go. <laughs> I'm chasing her in my PJs, hair <laughs> up and <laughs> no makeup on, chasing her out the door. I'm like, hey, hey, hi, girl. I had I'm just like, oh, good. I, I got a showing. I got to get to you. Bye. And like, <laughs> I'm driving from Texas to Oklahoma to go do a showing. So it's like being aligned with that kind of power, that kind of friendship, I'm so grateful and excited for because I feel like that's instrumental when it comes to learning and when it comes to being associated with people when it comes to growing I mean like I said like we're going to 10x con together we're not going there to go party in Vegas we're going there to freaking learn from the best of the best yeah Yeah. Yeah. and Kat suggested this book which has been awesome so far I haven't finished it just yet but um you know learning from people networking and it's having that right mindset and it's not necessarily about greed Mm -hmm. but it's also about like how can we collaborate how can we help other people? How can I help you? And how can you help me type thing? So I am so, so excited about all of this. Yeah, I would. And one of the things we learned, the biggest thing I think coming out of Jay's is we grew, we grew as people, you yes. know, he grew, he grew a team and transactions, but what I really credit him and John Kitchens for, because John had to deal with this every day. I don't know how. That <laughs> they grew us we grew as people yes. and when you yep. grow you're going to go and take that knowledge and you're going to go do different things with it and the great thing about being a part of exp is that we're able to do that now and and be a part of hunting gadger be a part of these guys and and grow and um and with other agents and the synergy that's involved and happening right now with commercial is real it's completely real i actually had met a client that remember is interested in, in buying a while back. It yeah. was already purchasing apartments. This has happened twice, multifamilies, a client, and literally is it literally in Holly's backyard. And yep. so this is how connected that this business, this particular sub market is, this niche. And yep. so we're just super excited to move forward and to help anyone else that wants to come get involved. And if you guys have any questions, obviously feel free to drop them in the comments, but then message Mm -hmm. us. We're, you know, we're not going to go out and put your business everywhere. That's what I love about Kat is like, you know, we're very, we're very real, but we're also very personal and very private. So if you guys have questions that maybe you don't want everybody else to know that you have questions about, feel free to message us directly. We won't, we won't tell anybody, but we'll definitely do our best to help and guide you and help you with your question. Because like, this is a huge deal because, you know, shifting from the unknown which, or I'm sorry, the known, which is residential for me to the unknown, which is commercial. I am grateful to, you know, not only have the mindset, the environment that I have now, but the friendships, the collaboration, the resources, and it's just going to be super exciting. So I'm definitely stoked about this next journey. Obviously you guys listening that are my neighbors, if you guys need to sell your house, I'll help y'all still anyways. But my main focus <laughs> is going to be commercial because- yeah. Like I said earlier, I'm just super excited about the the different um, clientele, the different strategies, the different tactics, the, the challenge. And you know, here, like I've, I've seen it so many times recently, but it's like 
-hmm. if you don't take that leap of faith, like you're holding yourself back and, and you're not confident. And to be honest right now, I'm not trying to be egotistical. I'm confident that, mm -hmm. you know, with the collaboration, with the partnerships, with the education, with the tools at hand, I'm more than confident that I'll be able to successfully launch a, or successfully, you know, create an environment and cultivate for commercial real estate agents, not just because I'm Holly Kitchens, because I'm Holly Kitchens with my best friend, Kat, with my husband, John, with, you know, leadership with like Jake Kinder, with all these people that I have leadership with. I am super excited about all of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm beyond excited. So congratulations to you because you are, you are such a hard worker. This girl you know, works effortlessly for everyone. And, and, and is that back always supportive and always helping and always that solution person and always back there just doing everything for everybody else. I'm excited for you because you're completely solution oriented. Every business owner, I'm so excited that you, what you're going to be able to provide to to the business owners alone. And it's time. This is your light. So congratulations. So <laughs> you know, like here is, here's just a little thing that kind of helped open my mindset and really kind of like shift my thinking lately is yesterday um, I had Jasmine Starr. I got to just, I just got to brag on this real quick. This is me being braggadocious if that's a word, but <laughs> I had Jasmine Starr, who's an incredible business strategist on my podcast. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I'm obviously going to consume her and her stuff. You know, I'm a huge fan of hers and I listened to a podcast of hers and I had actually talked about this on the podcast I dropped yesterday. It was like, she grew up in a lot of circumstances and a lot of you guys can relate to this. I don't care whatever your circumstances are. I feel like everyone always struggles that everyone has their own story of struggle. Mm -hmm. Everyone has their own environment. And for me, and I feel like a, a lot of, I, I saw myself in her in this way, because she had talked about how growing up, she was, you know, low income housing. Um, you know, I grew up low income housing. My mom did the best she could, but she was a single mom with four kids. No, none of our dads were in the picture. So you have that element and, you know, didn't have the nicest clothes, didn't have, like, we couldn't afford haircuts. Like my mom cut my hair. I was looking at a picture of love my mom, but my bangs were like crooked as shit. <laughs> but like growing up like that, like I grew up and that's just, you know, I'm grateful for that, but that's just how I grew up. It, but with that, mm -hmm. with, you know, not having a dad in my life, not having, um, you know, the, the nice things that all the kids are having or not having, mm -hmm. um, you know, or even like, it's funny because growing up in a small town in Rush Springs, Oklahoma, I'm half Mexican. And Mexicans back then, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's changed. Mexicans back then were the workers who worked in the watermelon fields. So they were like, people like would make racial slurs about Mexicans and this and the other. I'm just saying they're looking around like, well, what the hell does that make me? Like I'm Mexican. So just growing up with that kind of environment and that kind of exposure, like I almost, I always embraced the whole cliche. I'm the behind the scenes type girl mm -hmm. because Mm. I just started to kind of like, oh, okay. Like I, you know why though? It was because yeah. I didn't want that attention on me. I still, as, as a freaking adult at being 31 years old, I still mm -hmm. don't want that attention on me because I'm, there's always that fear going back to your childhood of like, okay, when I got attention towards me, it was negative. It was because I was being bullied. It was because I was doing this it was because, you know, people would make fun of my clothes, make fun of, you know, whatever my hair, make fun of my shoes, make fun of whatever. So what I always like, I love being behind the scenes because no one can make fun of me if they didn't know I was there. <laughs> okay. I'm telling you guys this backstory because she was kind of like saying something similar in the sense that she was, you know, immigrant family and all this and the other. And she like behind, behind the scenes, but then she realized one day she was being, she was doing a disservice by doing that. And I firmly mm -hmm. believe now that I'm doing a disservice by keep being behind the scenes and keep behind whatever, because at the end of the day, like, it's such a disservice for people, not only just clients or potential clients, but also people like us, Kat, who have, you know, went through the struggle, went through everything yeah. at the end of the day, you, you're, you, people don't know what you're going through unless you share it. And I'm sharing that with you guys to be vulnerable and to let you know that like, it's okay. If you know what I mean? Don't, don't rob yourself or your community or your clients by trying to play behind the scenes and not playing full out because if you do 
there's no telling like the life you could have lived versus the life you lived. So drop in that big bomb on the end of this live for you. (laughs) I love it. Oh my God. But I'm sorry. I, I agree with you 110%. We have to be real on who we are and just the stuff that I have gone through as a single mom didn't yeah. never wanted to be a statistic thought I have a marriage you know that perfect marriage forever as both having our own businesses and then being that that struggle you guys you saw what I went through and yeah. um but here's the and I'm gonna tell the one one of the car strike but one of the times this is my favorite story you guys so you gotta listen to this okay so I because I I literally lost everything in the 2008 okay and it was just so empowering to hear Jay and John on everything uh, that what they poured into us so one day I'm out showing (laughs) and it's the repo man, the repo car guy. And I don't know if anyone's had this story, but it's the repo car guy. And I'm showing the property to the clients. Like I'm literally out there in the kitchen, part of the house showing. And the guy is in front of that house and he's hooking my car up to be repo. Like he's literally hooking it up. Well, I'm turning and I'm showing and I'm going. And I'm like, oh my God. And I just turned around and I said, oh my God, they came to pick up my car today. Oh gosh, I, I forgot. Like they really did come to pick up my car. My car was supposed to be picked up today. I totally forgot that. Oh my God, blah, blah. And I'm just standing there now in my mind, I'm freaking out. I'm like, do you remember this? Because when I got back to the office, I was like freaking out, but I was like, in no way in hell, gonna let that house go unsold at that point and everybody I ended up selling two houses that day as a matter of fact as a result of of my car getting repo that day and 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 the even funniest thing if you remember I was so nice about that to the guy he that's how I got into commercial eventually because they had to sell some warehouses and things like that you don't ever know like my situation it turned here's, out to be a blessing. <laughs> here's what being an environment taught us to is like not to be a victim, but to hold ourselves accountable. And exactly. what I love about this story is Pat, you know, <laughs> if it was me, old Holly, without the mindset, if my car was being repoed, I would probably cry. I would have probably been like the I'm not a cute crier, you guys. I'm like, mm, like cry, like ugly. <laughs> I would have ugly cried. I would have let it derail my whole day, played victim. Wow, if I wasn't blah blah blah, if I was this that the other, my car wouldn't be repoed, this that and the other. But like oh we have God. our accountability glasses on. That's one of the most important lessons and that's right when it comes to like the mindset of learning from the guys is like being accountable. So like cat put her mm-hmm. panties on. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> this is before Uber. You can't just call an Uber. Exactly. We don't want to do a taxi back in the day. But if Kat had her clients start her around. She went and gave them the best advice. I'm sure found them a beautiful home that was perfect for their camp family. And then at the end of the day, she figured out how she could keep continue forward, get a new car, whatever. She was solution solution oriented, and that's why I love being associated with her because like cat yeah. makes that shit happen. Yeah, yeah. But, so if you guys didn't catch the very end, the guy who repoed her car, the repo company, the car company, the yes. repo, Kat's car. Yeah. Based. <laughs> When Kat moved to, okay, so let's talk about your journey real quick on going from residential to commercial. Yeah. So what was the phone call and who called you? Literally on, um, I was still, you know, working J's and I knew at that point, you know, y'all were going to Dallas and I wanted to go to Dallas. It just wasn't the right fit. My mom had died. I was dealing with a lot of the family stuff with that and I knew I needed to get out of Lawton the L town no offense but I just it yeah. was just it was, time your, your, and, your uh, time there had passed you were ready yeah, to it had passed. It was, yeah. and um when you know you lose a parent it's just there's a lot you're dealing with and so at that point I'm I had the Oklahoma City and um and I I'm opening up shop and the guy's like we want you to sell our warehouses we want you to sell this we want you to sell that so we ended up selling 
car dealerships, warehouses, everything. And I asked him, I said, why? You guys repoed my car like two years ago. And he's like, because you were so kind and you acted like nothing. And you, you know, he actually, I called him because remember, I literally, I think got another car from them. Like, I think it was like, I'm always playing later because I had sold, you know, so much. But the thing is, it's like, you're, it is all our mindset. And, really and I'm so thankful for that because I thought, wow, I'm going to go ahead and get this. And, and it was just the perfect timing of, of selling warehouses and selling the dealerships and all of that. And it just ended up being something I so enjoy. And I thought, I love this business. I love the numbers. I love the non-emotion. I love the fact that everything that we're looking at is helping for the business and the market indicators. And just, it's just, oh, it's so geeky, but I love that. So um, yeah, it, it turned out to be the best thing. My, my worst situation turned out to be the best thing. So that's, that's why. I and say. hopefully that's some kind of motivation for anyone <laughs> listening that is going <laughs> through something right now in life where you think it's not going to get better. Yeah. If my girl cat can take the repo car and turn it mm-hmm. into a commercial profession career yeah. and sell the guys a lot who <laughs> repoed her car. You guys can freaking do anything because like, if that's not motivation, then you guys need to change your mindset because that is like one of my favorite stories of hers, because I mean, there's a lot y'all like y'all catch us at cocktail at happy hour and we have yeah. a fair share of stories to tell you, but that's one of my favorite all-time favorites because it's just the classic, mm-hmm. like you have a choice. At the yeah. end of the day, it's all a choice. Uh, mm-hmm. and I'm excited now to know that cat has a beautiful card that's paid in full. That she <laughs> <laughs> Like, it's just so cool how everything's kind of came full circle, but we're completely <laughs> Probably different than how we used to be. Yeah, but that's the thing. Sometimes you gotta do and don't be ashamed. It was a matter. I I remember I went back to the office and I said, I gotta call these buyers. And I said, You guys give me the tour today. I'm gonna ride with you. We're gonna look at all kinds of houses. You take the tour of the town. And they loved it. And so just it's just you never know what you you we have to just turn it into right you know turn it into the positive everybody wants that yeah oh cat it looks like we lost your video i oh there you are you're back okay you <laughs> i am so grateful and super excited about this journey in real estate mm-hmm. and you know how it's completely different but it's also the same in in regards to working with you and having that i'm super excited because like back then you even helped me through like questions I had and you mentored me yeah. then you had years of real estate before that. Now it's like almost like repeating itself. So I'm super excited about this. Come full circle. It's full exciting. Circle. All right, you guys, thanks for hanging out with us. I know this is kind of a long chat, but we yeah. could, it would be fair just to come out and say everything. If you guys didn't know the backstory, if you guys didn't understand everything, cause it's funny. A lot of people now that I'm associated with, they didn't even realize that I sold real estate back in the day. Just because I'm helping them tactical, I'm helping with like, you know, yeah. just helping them with behind the scenes type stuff versus like them knowing who I was back then. So yeah, I am so excited to get back into it. I'm so excited about the collaboration, about the, just everything. And again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment or message me. I'm super excited to help you guys. And I know Kat's super excited to help you guys just as much. All right. And thank you. Thanks for being a part of this. We're excited. All right, you guys. Have fun and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.